Good afternoon. Wow, this is a great audience, you know. When we do these things, we always wonder, and they told us we'd be in this great room, and uh, John Clancy and I both worried that, you know, there would just be a few of us, but wow, look how many people are interested in World Chef education. It's fantastic. Thank you all for coming. World Chefs has always been involved in education, but in 2010 decided to take a leading role in providing standards, standards for global education. Maybe education standards isn't as necessary in some of the bigger countries, some of the more affluent countries, but we know, especially those of us that travel, most of the world needs World Chef standards. Most of the world needs the support of you and us to build programs, to improve what they have, to ensure that what they have is good quality. So in 2010, we launched the Recognition of Quality Culinary Education Program. You've heard these acronyms, RQCE, and I guess that's fine when you're doing slides. But for me, it doesn't say enough. Is recognition for quality culinary education. But before I go into the formal presentation, you thought I started already, didn't you? Yes, it is recognition for programs that already exist. But truly, the heart of it in developing the standards was to give guidance for schools that wanted to offer quality programs and maybe didn't have the wherewithal to do so. Maybe they thought they were doing quality culinary education, but really needed to improve what they were doing. So our program has two sides to it to recognize programs that are doing a quality job, but also to give guidance to those schools that want to provide quality and need World Chef's help. I cannot tell you how many schools have come to World Chef's with that in mind. Came to World Chef's for guidance. How can we provide quality? culinary education that meets global standards. Perhaps the standards in a South American country or an Asian country or a European country or an American country, they are all different. But the world is a global world, isn't it? Just look around the room here. Not just the world chefs, but how many times have, you know, John and I had conversations with leaders of culinary programs and say, when our students graduate, they move around the world. They may be educated in Norway and they may end up working in Australia. They may be educated in Asia and end up working in Europe. So the idea of global standards became incredibly important. And so as a education committee, and as a World Chef's body, we decided to develop those standards to give schools the opportunity to improve their programs and to showcase the programs that already exist. Ooh, what button should I push here? All right, green, green for go, Chef. Green, green for go. Green for go. I like green, green for, for go. go. Well, there's two green buttons. Anyway. The one with the green arrow. I got it. I did it. It moved, didn't it? <laughs> you know, you've heard numbers bounced around at the General Assembly, even during this presentation, about the number of schools. But I tell you, it's constantly growing. Constantly growing. We have right now over 15 schools in the process of being recognized. 
So by the time this Congress is over, there could be more. But 80 schools, 80 plus schools in the World Chefs Recognition Program, can you just imagine how many students 80 schools around the world represents? Can you imagine how many culinary educators are working in these 80 schools? And again, not only to improve what they have, but to help provide professional development against wax world chef standards globally. Schools can be found in 41 countries, all continents except Antarctica, unless the polar bears decide to start a culinary program. <laughs> so we're moving ahead. These are some of the countries where our recognized programs exist. You can see it's quite a nice list of schools and continuing to grow. Some countries have multiple schools in the program. Some just one, some a few. And that's okay, it doesn't matter how many schools are in a country. It doesn't matter how big or how small the school is. As long as their programs are quality and they can show us evidence that their graduates have success in the industry, which is a very important part of our evaluation pro process, they can apply, they can develop their program to meet the standards, or they can provide the evidence that shows that they already do have those standards. Everybody likes pictures. Just some of pictures. I couldn't show all the pictures or, you know, you'd all would go to sleep. But we love to see the students in the classroom. We love to see them working with their chefs and instructors. We love to see them actively engaged in culinary education. Can you learn culinary in a textbook? You can learn theory from, an, from a textbook, but you have to apply it. So one of the biggest aspects of our recognition program is that the facilities are of high standard, that the instructors are of a high standard, and that the students have ample opportunity to practice in kitchens in pastry shops, in bake shops, what they learn in the classroom. Eligibility requirements must be an official business. You can't just put a sign out in front of your restaurant and call yourself a culinary school. You must be an official business. It must be recognized by whatever agency in the government recognizes schools. We don't recognize home cook programs or Betty Crocker programs. We recognize quality schools, so it must be a legal entity, must be a professional school. Must have a track record of progress and success track record, there must be consistency. You open up a school today and you could have beautiful classrooms. Your teachers could have beautiful CVs. But what is your product? You don't know. You haven't created one yet. We don't know. We can't say that your graduates have gotten really good progressive jobs. All we can say is they can sit in your classroom and take notes. There must be consistency, there must be progress. Delivering quality culinary education, pastry arts, or hospitality education. Must have been in existence a minimum of five years, five years, again, to prove that you have this staying power, to prove that you've met the industry standard where your school exists. You open up a school today, is two years enough to say that your program is a quality program? 
things change all the time. In education especially, things change so frequently. This slide presentation will be outdated by the time I get back to Florida. Five years minimum, unless we do have some educational partners. City and Guilds is one. American Culinary Federation is another. And we welcome other associations that have their own accreditation programs to partner with World Chefs. Because in those cases, the schools are really given a hard time. They do self-studies. They are visited by educators, by administrative staff. A very thorough uh, accreditation process already exists in some countries. So if your school is already approved City and Guilds program, and we are a partner with City and Guilds, we communicate with City and Guilds, and we say, well, what about this school here in South Africa, or this school here in Malaysia? They claim to be a City and Guilds program. Are they? Okay. How are they doing? So we can get that first-hand knowledge that the school has already developed and is administering quality. So five years minimum, unless you have this other accreditation from an approved partner of World Chefs. Not just anybody, it has to be approved, just like our certification program that Chef Clancy was talking about. We map our requirements against theirs to ensure that their programs meet our standards. If their programs do not meet the World Chef standards, then the schools must go through the full process of proving that they offer these culinary programs at a very high level of quality. Finally, must provide the evidence. It's not just hearsay. It's not just talk. If you talk to myself, and I hope you do, or to Chef Clancy after this meeting or during the rest of the Congress, we will tell you that the assessing process, the evaluation process for schools is not easy. It does not happen in 24 hours. We go through painstaking measures to ensure that the evidence they provide is true. That the facilities they say they offer actually exist. And that their graduates are actually getting good jobs. So the schools must be able to provide this evidence. If they say they want to be recognized but they cannot prove a high local reputation, then they must wait until they are able to do so. And again, let me stress that point. I can't tell you a number, but we have had many schools apply and have not been approved. We have had many schools apply and then realize that their schools did not meet the standards. Some of those schools have gone the extra mile and have developed programs and curriculum and facilities and teacher credentials and local reputations that meet the standards. And that's what I said at first. It's not just a recognition program for quality schools. It's a guiding program to help schools reach those global standards. I'll go over quickly, briefly, because it's all on the internet and you can read it yourself. But there are 12 standards that the World Chefs developed to show that the programs are of high quality. One is that the program itself must have a qualified culinary director. Now I know you're saying, well, isn't that obvious, Chef? No. There are some schools around the world that have a culinary program 
somewhere tucked into a hospitality tourism program or somewhere tucked into a service industry program and their culinary and their director has no culinary experience well how can you guide the development of a culinary program if you don't have culinary experience you could be highly educated you could read a lot but you don't know what it feels like to be in a kitchen. You don't know what it feels like to hire a cook who cannot do the work. So the culinary director must be qualified. They must be educated and they must have industry experience. As well as the faculty. Now I know I've been in culinary education much longer than I'm willing to admit in front of everybody. I'm a lot older than I look, <laughs> I think. There are many teachers that teach culinary programs that should not be doing so. There are many teachers teaching culinary programs, maybe, maybe they graduated from a culinary school and they felt and the school felt that their diploma qualified them to teach. It does not. It may give them the theoretical knowledge, but again, can you learn culinary from a textbook? You have to apply it. So the culinary instructors must be qualified. They must have industry experience. They must have been able to prove their value in the industry before they're given the opportunity to teach culinary students. They must have experience. Continuous. A program that starts and stops and starts again. A program that only offers part-time culinary classes does not qualify. They must have continuous classes. They must be ongoing classes. They must have a full curriculum of classes. They must be a real culinary school, a real culinary program. Again, not just a simple baking program where they learn to bake cookies and make breads, or not just a simple you know, quick food service program, you know, McDonald's University, you ever heard of that? does not count. They must have continuous ongoing classes that, sh that we can look at, we can see the consistency of the, de of the delivery and the consistency of the product, the graduates. Formal lesson plans, this is one area I'll tell you, shocking to me again, being an educator for many, many years, that some schools don't have these. Some schools don't even know what we're talking about when we say lesson plans. Their teachers just get in front of the classes and start talking, and they think that's okay. They think that's enough. But we all know, as chefs and educators, that in order to have a quality product, we must have recipes, we must have procedures, we must have standard techniques, we must have quality assurance, we must have. Otherwise, what ends up on the table is something your customers don't want. What ends up on the job are employees that don't know what they're doing, have no clue of what they're doing. So, and this is one of the areas that a lot of our schools have to go back and have to create because they don't have them. Doesn't mean that their intent is not there. Does not mean that their passion is not there. Does not mean that their goals to be a quality program are not there. But it's one of the standards that World Chefs developed that we felt was incredibly important because lesson plans are the recipe cards. Lesson plans tell teachers 
how to teach, what to teach, and how to evaluate their students to see whether or not they learned what they were taught. So lesson plans, incredibly important. Can't say enough about facilities. I won't ever mention names, but we have turned down schools because the facilities just did not meet World Chef standards. Did not have modern equipment. Did not have adequate kitchen space. You don't want to cram 30 kids in a small room with two or three stoves and call yourself a culinary program? Forget it. We won't recognize it. it. Must be adequate. They must be large enough to hold the number of students they say they hold. Now again, we have recognized small programs. Not all of our programs have 200, 300, 400 students. Some of our programs have just under 100 students. The size of the program doesn't matter but the quality of the program is what matters. They have to show us evidence. Sometimes you know how it is, and I know sometimes you think about the evidence that schools provide. Sometimes we get pictures of kitchens that might have well come out of a Electrolux catalog. We don't know if they're for real or not. They look nice, but they could just simply be that. They could be a Photoshop picture. So we must see students, we must see faculty in those kitchens so that we can evaluate the size, uh, the type of equipment based on the type of cuisine. Oh, I should have mentioned that in one of the earlier slides. It doesn't matter what the cuisine is. You be teaching Malaysian cuisine, Indian cuisine, Irish cuisine, doesn't matter, as long as the education is of a high standard. The cuisine does not matter. But it must be, have the facilities to ensure that it works. Commitment and support, this has to come from the highest level. Commitment and support means that the school the owners of the school, the directors of the school, the presidents of the school, and titles change depending on what part of the world you're in, that they really are, truly are committed to the culinary program. Now again, we have looked at, no offense if your program is hospitality tourism, but sometimes, my experience, is schools that already exist doing all sorts of other types of programs realize that there's money to be made in culinary. So they say, hey, why not just throw a couple kitchens in there and hire a couple culinary educators and call ourselves a culinary school? Again, it's not enough. They must be able to demonstrate commitment and support for the continued development, for the financial support that a culinary program needs. You know as well as I do that if we opened a culinary school today, even with the highest standards, even with the best faculty, and even with the nicest facilities, five years from now it will not be adequate anymore. Maybe not even that long. Maybe two years from now it won't be adequate anymore because they need to change as the industry continually changes they need to change so they must be able to demonstrate they must be able to provide evidence that they the higher ups the owners the board of trustees whatever are committed to the continued development of that culinary program Mission statement, goals, and objectives. And it's not just a couple of words. It means something. 
But they can't just send us a letter. It has to be published. It has to be on their website or in their catalog. It has to be what they are telling the world. If we got a mission statement that says well, we're a, you know, broad scale culinary or broad scale educational program that offers a lot of variety of educational programs for students, that's not enough. The mission has to relate to culinary or pastry arts. Has to. Has to commit to the quality of education. Must. And if not, then we may not approve them. We all know how important HACCP, H-A-C-C-P is, food service, safety, and sanitation. The schools must have that as part of their curriculum. It must be in their body of work. They can't just say, oh yeah, we, we know, we do that. See our inspection report, isn't it wonderful? They must teach it. They must provide evidence that they teach it. They must provide evidence that it's in their program, that every student that walks through their doors has at least the foundation of food safety, HACCP, and sanitation. Again, we've gone back with some schools that, oh yeah, we teach them about sanitation. And we say, show us, and they can't. They talk a good story, but they cannot provide evidence. Again, we don't automatically deny. I guess this is a guiding program. So we've had schools introduce full sanitation food safety courses into their program because World Chef said it was necessary. They must have libraries. You know, well, us, sorry, not called libraries anymore. Learning centers, you know, whatever you want to call them, where the students can do outside research. One textbook, two textbooks isn't enough. They must be able to do internet searches. They must be able to read periodicals. They must be able to look at videos. They must be able to take education outside of the classroom because that's where the world is outside of the classroom they must have industry support whenever a school applies for world chefs recognition we reach out to the national member association and ask them to give us guidance because we're not there but we need their support we need their advice we need their guidance. So the Chefs Association and national members tell us, yes, this school has a good reputation, or this school has not demonstrated consistent quality education. Now that's not enough just to deny a school, but it's enough to get us to look harder and deeper and to look more uh, closely at their requirements. And we've gone back to schools and said, hey, you need to prove this because we've heard that. And they do. Sometimes the applications come with a letter of endorsement already from the National Association, and that's obviously a big help. Quality assurance. You know, like anything, how do you know that the customers in your restaurant or hotel had a good meal? What if they didn't? What do they do? They just keep silent? Do you have a process in your restaurant or hotel to get critique from your customers? You should. Because a customer that leaves your restaurant with, pardon the pun, a bad taste in their mouth, won't come back and will tell all their friends not to visit so the schools must have a grievance policy. They must have a procedure where the student can make a claim against the administration or against the faculty or against the school. That the student, who is the customer, can complain. 
Many schools have a grievance policy, but some don't. And again, we insist they must have and they must provide evidence that they have. Finally, our 12th standard. As I said, in one of the eligibility requirements, it must be a legal business. It must be able to provide a business license. It must be able to provide some evidence that the government, and again, country to country, it's all different. There must be some document that says this is a real school. It is approved as a business. It is given a license to operate. And there's some regulatory body who is overseeing them to make sure that the business is run as a quality business. It must exist. They must be a legal business. Afterwards, I'm here, Chef Clancy is here somewhere, he's here, he's here, to answer any questions you may have about the recognition program, about the certification program. And the newest benefit, as you've heard, and let me just place it here as I wrap up, one of the biggest benefits of being a recognized culinary, quality culinary education program is now, because of World Chef certification program, your graduates can graduate as a certified Comey chef. The first step to being where you are today, certified Comey chef or certified chef de partie, the first step of being you, professional chef of lifelong learning. Thank you very much. Thank you.